Christina and welcome back to my current subscribers and thank you for joining us to the Thrifty DIY Facebook group. This video is in particular dedicated to you and your questions that I had that you had on my um, blue hutch. And one of the most important questions that you guys had was what color is that? And so I figured I would make a video because it was not an actual color that I could tell you. So I want to give you all the information so you can make your best decision before going and purchasing this blue color paint. So speaking of nice things in my home, one of the things that I needed was a hutch for my dining room because I've been really into platters and plates and that's pretty much the purpose of a hutch is to house all of those platters and serving wares. So I went on the hunt for a um, hutch and I found one for free on Facebook Marketplace. So for deciding a color, I really was thinking about just doing white because I didn't want this hutch to be a huge clunky piece um, and I, I wanted white to just kind of make it look like seamless like it wasn't big and, and taking up a lot of space and so I wanted to go lighter and um, some of my other furniture ha has white paint accents too so I was thinking that and I know that's been really big in the farmhouse trend but I've been noticing that um, Joanna Gaines and her kitchens that she's been doing on Fixer Upper She's been doing more of jewel tone colors, like emerald greens, like a shade of it, and um, dark peacock blue, and she's been kind of going for these jewel tones, and although I really do still love white, I figured I'm going to try to sell my house, I don't know when, but probably soon, eventually, and I figured by the time I do that, white furniture may not be the thing anymore, so let me look to the future and pick out a bold Joanna Gaines color. So after some Pinterest searching, I found a color that I really wanted, which I'll show you a picture of. And I'll link it below so you can also go to the page from which I found the inspiration picture. But the problem with that inspiration picture was the girl just made it herself, so the cust it was a custom color. And she said that the closest color to her custom color was by Bear Midnight Show. So off to Home Depot I went to go see if I could get this Midnight Show by Bear. And here is what I came up with. All right, so these were the three colors that I ended up leaving Home Depot with. So I initially went in for Midnight Show, but to me, Midnight Show was a little bit too gray. I didn't think that was actually the color that I wanted, like my inspiration picture. Next, I was thinking about this color title, but it seemed to be too bright blue, like more like ocean or something like that. And that was not what I wanted. And then lastly was inked, but it just seemed a little too bright. Um, and I think the navy in the picture was a little less bright. So what I ended up doing was I used, I made my own custom blend. I did five parts of inked for the depth of color and or for at least the darkness. And then um, I did one part midnight show and I mixed that and I came up with this right here. And I thought that that was a good, a good um, color match. But the only problem was, and I'll show you a picture now. The problem was that on my hutch, it just looked a little too dry. So when I went to the store to get my custom blend, I got it in eggshell. And let me show you. So I ended up with this custom blend right here. Um, go ahead and screenshot this if you are interested. These were, um, I think maybe if you use these numbers, you might be able to get this custom color. And again, I did eggshell to give it a slight uh, glossy look because the, the flat colors were just too flat and dry looking for me. And then stay tuned to the end though because I'm gonna show you, I didn't just use this color alone, I made it into a chalk paint. Next up, I did give the, the hutch a light sanding because I wanted the color to last. And I know chalk paint, 
um, is supposed to be designed so that you don't have to sand, but it just made me feel better. So um, it was a uh, grit 120 and I just did it gently just to rough up the surface a little so that the paint would have something to adhere to. And then when I was done, I wiped it down with a uh, damp cloth. All right, so once I got my custom blend home, then I needed to make it into a chalk paint. And I got this recipe from Live Love DIY, and I will link the recipe below. But it's where you use um, two cups of your paint, five tablespoons of plaster of Paris, and two tablespoons of water, and you just mix it up and then you'll end up with your own chalk paint. For this, I used a wide mouth large mason jar, but um, I've used also in the past a pickle jar, whatever kind of a jar or container you have. And um, I thought, how am I gonna get this paint into this container without a huge mess? Because I mean, it is wide mouth, but still. So I had a Powerade bottle and I figured, huh, let me cut off the top of it and use this as a funnel. And so that's what I did. I placed the Powerade uh, funnel on the top and I was able to pour in my paint with minimal mess. Lastly, I wanted to put a protective coating. And so I had this on hand for one of my other projects that I used. It's called Minwax Paste Finishing Wax, and I got that in the um, natural kind. And by the way, I have trust in my chalk paint because I actually used it on another project before, and that project is still holding up um, really well, and I did not even coat that with, with wax yet. I'm still going to do it, but I have not done it, and it's been, I want to say, two, maybe two years by now that I've had that project without any... Um, chipping on the paint. So anyway, paste finishing wax and I ordered some cheesecloth. Now in the past, I've used any old cloth, um, old socks I've used, um, but I just decided, you know, they recommend cheesecloth. Let me go ahead and do it the right way. I got this off Amazon for like three or four dollars. So I only use a little bit of it too, so I can use it on other projects. So anyway, I cut off a piece of the cheesecloth and this is what the wax looks like. Now it is hard, so you just kind of dip the cloth in and scrape some out. And then you just gently wipe on your surface. If you go too hard, then it will um, take off some of the paint. So just go gently. And then when you're, you let it sit for 15 minutes to cure or harden or just kind of, kind of like to set in. And then take another piece of um, dry, you know, unused cheesecloth and just kind of wipe again gently at the end to take away any extra um, wax that was not able to cure or harden. And then you'll be left with a nice finish to your paint. I did it more heavily in the um, more heavily used area, such as the handles. So like, let's see, like around here I did more. On the very top surface, I did more waxing. Now my boyfriend, um, wanted it to be a little more glossy um, and in this light I don't know if it's coming across the right way but anyway he wanted it to be more glossy and so one thing I would look into maybe for next time is a polycrylic which I've never used but I've heard to not use a polyurethane because that will yellow the color over time so um, polycrylic might have worked for this as well. So while you're here, go ahead and feel free please to subscribe down below because I'm hitting a goal for a thousand subscribers by February 20th so I can remain a YouTube partner and I would really appreciate that. So that was how I redid my free hutch for probably a total of $20 including the paint samples and the final paint because I had all the other supplies. So thank you so much for joining me today. Please remember if you have not already done so to subscribe. That would greatly help me out and then I can continue to make more videos like this and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye!